organized all of my seeds in alphabetical order. That was the first thing that I did. So I have um, them all alphabetized, all of my vegetables, and then I have a whole spot over here for my flowers. I made myself this little binder that I had and I found this in one of my seed magazines. So basically it just has um, when you should, it's this for indoor sewing guide, but it's when you need to start your seeds. It's a list. I found out when my last uh, frost date was for my area. Um, then the next one is 10 to 12 weeks out, eight to 10 weeks before your last frost date, six to eight weeks before your last frost date, four to six weeks, Two to four, one to two. This is my seed packet here. And if you read the back, it tells you kind of what you need to do. Um, planning instructions. It says surface sow seeds directly in the garden after the danger of frost. So this seed here is gonna be directly into the ground. If I, unless I wanted to be a rebel, and try I am them going to directly ground. sow these into the ground. So now that I have all that figured out. The next thing I did was because I'm a visual person and I went and I have all of these old seed magazines. Like I just collect them, I think. And I thought, well, it would be kind of cool if I could incorporate those old seed magazines into, into my binder to make so it colorful. So I just basically ripped out a page out of the seed magazine and majority of my seeds are Baker Creek. I do have a few that aren't, but this is what I did. So this is dill, and this is a post-it note, and I'm going to hole punch this and put it in my little binder. But this is my, I've got elephant dill, and then I have just regular dill. And those, um, if I look at my little guide here, and I look at my dill seed pack, now and it's recommended it's to grow these outside about one to two weeks before your average last frost Which date. Which I probably definitely will because for example, dill is a great insect barrier, great pollinator. So I'm gonna plant those around my plant. So I'm gonna have quite a bit of them. And I probably will do that for this dill. But I really think that my elephant dill, which gets to be three to four foot tall plants, they get to be big. If um, I wanna start those a little early so I can get those well, out right away. start inside, you need to start at eight to 10 weeks um, before your last average frost date, which would be one the January 29th through February the 12th. I do want a lot of dill, so that's gonna take up a lot of space. So I might wanna just um, put these in, um, Little, a little later than the eight to 10 weeks because I am in the process of building a greenhouse and we do have a date which we have to have it done by. And so that date is gonna be like the 1st of March. Like I need that greenhouse up at least by the 1st of March. I can start a lot of my seeds inside and they can grow in the pots or they can grow in the little cells for probably a month or so depending on how deep I you know, put them. And I have enough room to do that, but then they have to be transplanted outside to my greenhouse. So I, for me, have to think about the space that I have and be realistic about it. And since I want a lot of deal, I probably might wanna wait and do these when the greenhouse gets up, which if I did that March 1st, that's four, five weeks, which, you know, it's supposed to be eight to 10 weeks if you want it right away. So it'll still give me a whole month uh, jump start as if I was to put this That's in the That's really ground. where I'm at right now as I'm making it pretty and I'm kind of writing myself little notes on my little papers on when I wanna do But that. when it comes to the amount of seeds that I wanna start, to start from seed. So I have my graph paper with my garden, um, you know, rough draft of where I want everything and how I'm gonna do everything here. So that way I can know what I need to start from seed there. Now, so I am starting um, a, a lot of mine from seed, but there are some that I'm not gonna start from seed because obviously like this amaranth you put right in the ground. I've never grown this before, um, but if you look, you know, 
okay, so I'm gonna plant these directly in the ground. Well, these have to go in after the danger of frost. So I will directly sow them after, you know, April 12th or whatever. My asparagus that I'm doing from seed, um, they can get into the ground just as soon as like I can, well, at least two weeks probably before the last frost, I can get my asparagus in. And I am starting my asparagus patch this year. I have not done it yet. Asparagus is a different animal, but we can talk about that later. But anyways, that's the difference. Like these can go in before the last frost. These need to go in after the last frost. Um, and then there are some that you can put in just as soon as you can get the soil worked up. You know, a lot of these are, a lot of these are frost tender plants, but there are some that are, that can withstand a little bit of frost and it's okay um, to put them in a little early, like spinach. I will put those in just as soon as I don't know, I can work the ground area and put them up. I still have spinach growing out there and it's, I mean, December, January. So, I mean, there are different stages of when you wanna put things in the ground. So those are the have to's, you know, I wanna get my seeds started um, in my greenhouse and uh, get them a head start to get them outside. But there are some that will be directly sowed. There'll be some that'll need to be before. There'll be some that'll need to be after or whatever. So <clears throat> that's where I'm making my plan for my garden. Now, there is something that I'm gonna do this year that I've never really done in the past and that is succession growing because I really want to plant a bunch of green beans where I can can a bunch of, uh, pressure can a bunch of green beans. So I'm gonna do that in like a succession planting, like every seven to 14 days, I'll be planting green beans so that they can, you know, not all come in all at once or whatever. So that is my plan with my green beans. You can also do that with a lot of your herbs um, can succession so, and there are other plants that you can do um, succession growing with. And basically it is, you know, so you can get what you want and then not have them all come in all at one time is the benefit of succession growing. Also with my tomatoes, um, I am going to stagger those out. I am in an area that I can do that because we have a long growing area. So I'm going to start some a little earlier and some a little later so I don't have all my tomatoes coming in at one time. And I'm gonna be a lot more um, focused on only like a few tomato plants. I'm not gonna do a whole bunch of variety of tomato plants um, because I do have quite a bit of tomato plants, but I'm gonna focus on just doing a few and getting more from that plant instead of having a bunch and have to worry about tying a bunch of them up and all of that. That is not anything that I want to have to do this year because my focus this year is to get more um, quality fruit and not necessarily having to do every single variety that I have um, so yeah, those are the things that I'm going to do and this is how I'm going to do it in my garden this year. And um, it's very, uh, it's just a lot if you think about it, but if you do it in stages, you know, like first, like I said, like the very first thing that I did was I alphabetized all my seeds. The very first thing you could do is order your seeds too and get those on the way if you don't have them and know what you're growing, have them in front of you. And then you'd wanna take a rough draft of your garden or what you're doing, the area that you have to grow in and what, you know, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna trellis them up? Or are you gonna have in ground? You know, that's another, um, that's the second step that I would do. You know, figure out where you're gonna put it um, in your garden, what space you have um, and what you're working with. Um, and then third, you wanna go in and find your last frost date you wanna go in and check out to see, like if you're starting from seed, how many weeks prior do you need to do it? But don't go crazy and just put a bunch of seeds in inside because you have all these small little cells and you can just throw them in there. You will eventually have to up hot those and they get bigger and you need more you know, light. And then the windowsill is not really the ideal lighting. You need like a grow light for them to, to be successful. So
So don't get over jealous, plan to make sure, like my plan is to do a few in the house that I can handle within about a month and then taking them out to the greenhouse when we will have it built for sure by the 1st of March. That's um, our goal. So anyway, it's just a video today to show you what we are doing and how we're doing with the garden planning. I hope y'all are staying warm because it is cold here. I'm sure it's cold where y'all are at if you are in um, January and experience the cold winter. So stay warm. My dogs are barking. Every time I do a video, they fight. I don't know. Um, but until I post another video, y'all have a great and wonderful day. Happy gardening, happy gardening planning. Until I post another video, y'all. Bye.